wow, that all sounds good, but I'm going to have to think about it. Do you ever get this objection? This is not a fun objection to hear, but when you understand what's really going through the mind of the consumer and how to respond to it, it's actually not that scary. So I want to talk to you about that today. Hey guys, I'm Jeff Burlingame, mentor for Two Brain Business. Welcome to the Run a Profitable Gym Two Brain Business YouTube channel. If you're looking for more content like this that will help you run a profitable gym, you might want to stay tuned. So consider subscribing to the channel, smash the like on this video, ring that notification bell so you can see when we drop more content, and consider sharing this with your business friends because it's going to help everybody. So today's objection that we're going to work on is the think about it objection. So you're going through your sales process, you presented everything, you presented the price, and the prospect says, that all looks good, but I'm gonna have to go home and think about it. What do you do? Some of you might stop dead in your tracks. You might not know how to proceed from here. It can be scary, it can be frustrating. Objections can do that to you, but if you practice them enough, and you have a system to approach them with, they're really not that bad. In fact, they can be fun dare I say, sales can be kind of like a puzzle that you're trying to figure out, which I know you got, I mean, if you run a gym, you probably have some sort of competitive nature in your body. So you probably look for that, right? You need a challenge, you like a challenge? Sales is probably the best challenge there is because the reward is helping to grow your business. Kind of a big deal, right? So let's talk about the think about it objection. All I need to think about it means is I do not have enough information in order to swipe my credit card today. I don't see enough value here to say yes. It doesn't actually mean no. And it also definitely does not mean they're going to go home and think about it. Because here's the thing. If you guys look at the interest graph, which I'm going to show you right here. X and Y axis. On the Y axis, we have the level of interest of the consumer in your business and your product and your service. And on the X axis, we have time. So as time goes on, the interest drops. And what happens after price has been presented, you've completed the sales process, but you have not made the sale, is that interest Dry, it plummets to the earth. It, the bar goes to the Marianas Trench. It is gone within 24 hours. They are not walking out of your building going like, oh, that was a nice gym, nice guy. Definitely want to go back and talk to him. Man, let me really like, let's make a pros and cons list. All right, here's the pros, you know, could get fit. Here's the cons, lots of money. I don't know, maybe I can make this work. This is not happening. This is a fantasy in sales. And the sooner you understand that that's a fantasy, the sooner you will make more sales, the sooner you will grow your business, the sooner you will run a profitable gym. So this is very important for you to understand on a mindset level. When people leave, they do not think about you, they forget about you, they will not come back. I don't care if they actually do, because when they actually do come back, it happens in such a a rare number of circumstances that it's not something that you can effectively rely on. So data would show if they leave, they don't come back, even if it's 70-30. 70% of the time they leave, they never come back. 30% of the time they do come back, great. Sometimes it works. Do not rely on 30%, rely on 70% and work harder to make the sale. So what do we say? Again, when somebody says, I need to think about it, they're really saying, I don't see enough value in this. Um, I don't have enough information to decide today, something along those lines. So we need to figure out why they don't see the value, what would help them see the value, and what they're really thinking about. So here's the easiest response. The first thing to do when somebody objects to a sale is to acknowledge them, to say, I hear you, I understand, that makes sense, okay, tell me more something along those lines. So usually I will say, okay, I hear you. But the second thing you're gonna do is you're going to ask a question and your goal with this question is to uncover the real problem. So if they say, I need to think about it, the easiest question in the whole wide world to ask is if you don't mind me asking, what do you need to think about? What are you thinking about? What will you be thinking about when you go home, right? I need to understand what they're going through. And if you've watched previous videos that we've done on sales, you also understand we're not here to handle objections. We're here to strategize with 
the prospect. Our goal is to help them. Whether they buy from us or not, it's irrelevant. We're here to help. We're on the same team. It's us, not me versus you. Always keep that in mind. So we ask that question. What is it you need to think about? And by the way, be sure to ask this in a tactful manner. Not like, what do you need to think about? More like, hey, if you don't mind me asking, what is it that you'll be thinking about? Low voice inflection, nice calm demeanor. That's the approach you want to take. So when you do that, they're more likely to open up. 99.9% .9 of the time, they're gonna tell you at this point what it is that they're thinking about, or at least relatively close to what it is that they're actually thinking about. Sometimes they will still hold back, and that's okay. We're gonna ask a lot of questions, and eventually we'll get to the truth. But most likely they'll say something like, I need to see if this fits my budget. I need to check my schedule. I need to see if I can commit to this month-to-month -month plan or this contract that you're offering, whatever it is. Now you know what the problem is, or at least the assumed problem. So what we need to do is we need to next address the problem. So let's take, for example, the fact that they need to look at the price. They need to see if this fits their budget. Our next step should probably be to confirm what it is that they're looking at. So what is the price or the range of prices that they're looking at that they're going to be comparing later again? Pros and cons, they're not doing that, it's not gonna happen. So we just ask them straight up, hey, if you don't mind me asking, which option are you looking at that you're gonna be comparing to see if it fits in your budget? And these are all reasonable questions, by the way. We're not pushy salespeople, we don't need to be. We just need to strategize with them. Your goal is to get them to talk the problem out. Talk out loud. If they do that, you can solve the problem with them, and we all come to a nice happy conclusion and it's a win-win-win for you. You, the business, and this person. That's what we want. If you don't mind me asking, what is it that you're looking at? They point to the page and they say, I really want to do this plan, but I really don't know if I can swing it. We say, okay, great. That is a fantastic plan for you and I'm excited that you're interested in that. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, how close to your budget do you think that is? So we're just trying to get a range. Where, where are we at in this you know, fictional budget? I just want an idea, right? So once we know generally where we're at, they'll say, well, that's $300. I was really looking to spend like $250. Okay, great. So what that tells me in a very positive way is that we are very close. So I'm gonna respond back to them by saying, hey, that's great, we're only $50 away. Wow, perfect. I think this is a great program for you, but, and now we need to take another step and this step goes back to your notes. Now, I've mentioned this before. If you do a really good job getting somebody's goals, and more importantly, understanding why those goals matter to them, this is their emotional tie down, this is their, I've called it the hot button before. If you know what that thing is, that motivation, if you guys are into motivational interviewing, what's the motive, what's the motivation? If we know what that is, we can now go back to it, circle back a little bit, and press on it as many times as possible. So now I would circle back, I would say, this is great, we're only $50 away. Let me ask you this, Mrs. Jones. When we were talking earlier, we determined that you are here because you want to lose 20 pounds. More importantly than that, and I just wanna like paint this whole picture for you, we did determine that losing that 20 pounds would do this for you. And this is where you highlight that why. It's going to give you more energy. It's gonna get you more sleep. It's going to uh, give you you know, the, the time, the confidence, whatever it is in your life to make your life better, okay? So I'm gonna highlight those things, and I'm gonna say, remember talking about that? She, of course, will, will say yes, and you say, great. And I really want these things for you because I think they'd be an amazing way to improve your life. Wouldn't you agree? She'll say yes. And now we say, here's the big thing. How important is this stuff to you? How serious are you about that? How much does it matter that you accomplish these goals and achieve these whys on this other level? And how much do you want your life to improve by? And at this point, she should say, because of how you phrase this, something along the lines of, yeah, I absolutely want this, I really do. And then I can come back to the price and say, well, Mrs. Jones, isn't it worth the 50 extra dollars to make sure that that happens? It's only $50. At this point, she should be in. She might not be, but she should be in. And if she is, we say, great, let's get started. 
However, if we're in a situation where she still can't afford it, like she, you, she's bled dry, she has no money, she cannot do this extra 50 bucks, then she needs some financial assistance. And this is where I'd recommend using a budget system to try and help her with her budget. So we'll circle back and say, Mrs. Jones, maybe I can help at this point. Okay, so I need you to maybe in the next couple of minutes be, be open with me and uh, maybe we can figure this thing out. Does that sound good? Uh, she says yes, of course, because she's wondering if you're going to cut a deal or do something for her. We're not. No discounts, no deals. We don't need to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to try and find $50 in her budget. That's the goal. To start this thing off, we're going to say, Mrs. Jones, why don't we do this? Let's work together on the budget and maybe, maybe we can find $50 to make this more affordable for you and not put you in a bad position financially because that's not my goal. I don't want that. I want you to get in here, be committed, be accountable, accomplish your goals and be happy. And if you're in a bad financial position, I'm sure that's not going to be true. So not our goal. So why don't we do this? Let's take a look at all the areas in your life where you might be spending money on things that aren't necessarily good for you or things that are definitely not helping you achieve these goals. Sound good? She'll probably say yes. And at that point she says yes, you move forward and you say great. At this point you can use our acronym called CRAFT, which is a very simple way of checking the negative areas of people's budget. And by negative, I mean things they spend money on that have a negative impact on their health. So C is for caffeine. R is for restaurants and entertainment. A is for alcohol. F is for fast food takeout. Yes, that's separate from restaurant because people think they're different. Uh, trust me, I've done this thousands of times for over a decade. Uh, and then T is tobacco, which I often never get to. And it's also the most touchy of subjects, so you don't really want to get there. Uh, but caffeine alone has made me a lot of sales. When you think about caffeine, you think about Starbucks, you think about energy drinks, you think about supplements, whatever it is. So we just simply ask Mrs. Jones, hey, Mrs. Jones, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what's your favorite caffeine product? Do you, do you drink caffeine? I know my favorite personally is those Bang Energy drinks or uh, Starbucks coffee, right? So you, you kind of like play that role of like, I'm guilty of it too. It's okay to say this, like this is not a fitness professional in this position saying like, oh my gosh, she drinks coffee, what a horrible human being. No, we understand, everybody likes it, it's fine. So we say like, you know, my favorite is Starbucks. She says, yeah, I like a Starbucks every now and then. I say, great, me too, what's your favorite kind? And this is, it's gotta be conversational, you guys, otherwise it feels like uh, you're putting them through the ringer. This is not a test. This is not going to the principal's office, tell me everything. This is working together as a team, strategizing a way to find 50 bucks. So what's your favorite drink? She says, you know, a, a tall, you know, mocha frappuccino. I don't know, whatever it is. So she says that, you say, great, mine is this. And then you ask, how much is yours? And she says, $4 each time I get it. You say, great, how often do you get them? Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, so $4 times two days a week is eight bucks. There's four weeks in the month, we could assume, so she's spending $32 a month on mocha frappuccinos. We found 32 bucks, okay? The key here though, is we're not gonna ask them to cut everything. The goal would be to cut any of these categories in half or maybe by a quarter, just some small amount where they don't feel like they're having something taken away from them, but now they feel like they get a, a little bit of extra cash. They just have to commit to not going on Tuesdays. They only go on Thursdays now. So we've then saved her $16. So then we go to the next thing. Do you have any other caffeine products that you like to take? Like I mentioned, I like Bang Energy drinks. She says, yeah, this energy drink. How often do you get them? Three days a week. Okay, how much are those? $2.50. Okay, let's add that up. So we're at $7.50 a week. And if you cut that in half, we could just say, let's shave three bucks off of that. So now we're at three times four is 12 more dollars. So 16 plus 12, we're now at 28 bucks. And you're doing all this math on like the back of your notes here, like just on a blank sheet of paper, like 16, you know, another 12, we're at 28 bucks. Okay, cool. We're over halfway there, by the way, now, guys. So moving forward, you go to restaurants, so on and so forth. Restaurants is one of the easiest ones. Can we say, uh, people don't think about how much they spend at restaurants, okay? So you say, 
How often do you go out with your family? Do you guys go to entertainment? Do you like concerts? Like you go to those? I mean, we understand in a 2020 world, concerts don't really exist in the same manner, but takeout still exists. So then we can shift the takeout, go to the fast food section. But the point is you keep digging around and asking these questions a very gentle way and also always putting yourself in a position where you say like, I do it too, it's okay, to get them to open up. They'll open up, you put the numbers on the page, as soon as you find $50, you stop. That's why I never get to tobacco. Well, almost never get to tobacco. So you stop as soon as you find 50 bucks, you say, we did it, Ms. Jones, we found $50. Are you ready to change your life? She says, I, I mean, I guess, sure, let's go. And then we roll on. So wrapping this thing up, again, if they need to think about it, all they're saying is they're not seeing enough value, they don't have enough information to make a yes decision with you yet. You need to do the extra work. So just follow the instructions we went through on today's video, apply it in your very next sales opportunity, and let us know how it goes in the comments below. We can't wait to hear, and we hope that it helps you move a step closer to running a profitable gym. Thanks again for watching, you guys. Again, I'm Jeff Burlingame, mentor for Two Brain Business, and we'll see you on the next video.